Good afternoon, everyone. Appreciate you. Welcome to Wilmington. Thank you for, uh, for everybody coming out this morning and, uh, through the bad weather. As you can tell by the uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, coming this morning uh, to give the uh, opening uh, keynote, the state of Delaware is uh, very committed you know, to trade and the Port of Wilmington. I'll get into the presentation in, in a second, but the GTUSA, we, we first looked, started looking at the Port of Wilmington five years ago. Uh, I led a, the U.S. contingent uh, up here to study the port and it was the commitment uh, by the state, it was a commitment uh, by the labor, it was a commitment you know, by the citizens of Delaware that really you know, was the hook for us you know, to say yes to coming into uh, the Port of Wilmington and making an investment. So uh, we're, we're pleased to be here. Uh, I, I did have the opportunity to visit Morocco five years ago, and I can uh, attest the food is spectacular. Uh, but I hope to visit uh, many other countries that, that are uh, that are here today and, and visit and, and uh, taste your local cuisine as well. So you heard some outstanding presentations uh, by the panel this morning, and the, my fellow panelists here uh, are resources for everyone to use. Now I'm a representative of the Port of Wilmington to show you that uh, the Port of Wilmington you can be your port of choice uh, for not only export cargoes, but import cargoes as well. So the port uh, right now is 99 years old. Next year we'll be celebrating our 100th anniversary and uh, the, the port is, is thrilled to be uh, taking that. get into a list of the cargoes here in a second, but uh, as, as I mentioned, we do imports, export, we do bulk, freight bulk, we do containers, we do vehicles. Uh, you'll see a, a, a huge laundry list of the different type of cargoes you know, that we handle. We're the number one uh, uh, port in the nation uh, for fresh fruit, fresh fruit including uh, juice concentrate. We're the number one uh, largest banana port. Uh, we have both Dole and Chiquita making weekly calls here. We're the uh, largest pineapple port, along with those bananas. Uh, you know, there's uh, pin uh, pineapples that come in as well. Uh, we're the number one port for Moroccan clementines. Uh, in fact, last year, last fruit season that usually starts in October and runs through April, the port imported 36,000 pallets of clementines. This fruit season, we imported 88,000 pallets of clementines, 141% uh, increase. And the month of June, we had a vessel uh, a week and a half ago. It was the, usually the clementine season ends in the month of April. We had a vessel in the month of June uh, for the first time ever you know, at the port. So thank you very much. We, we appreciate <laughs> We're also a large port for uh, Chilean grapes. Uh, the, the, we have the largest fumigation uh, site in, in the entire United States, and currently under USDA regulations, all grapes coming in from Chile need to be fumigated. So here's a list of you know, some of the uh, 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 commodities that we handle. I mentioned clementines. We handle a uh, wind blaze from time to time. In fact, this year we had one in April. We had another vessel in May for a large uh, landside uh, uh, project by GE in West Virginia. I mentioned bananas. We do a lot of cars. In fact, I was we were short supervisors uh, last Friday, so I threw my hat in the ring and I uh, went out and helped supervise the boat. Uh, probably got in the way more than I helped them. But uh, we, uh, that vessel, after it left here, was going to Nigeria with a, a lot of uh, used vehicles you know, on there. Cattle. So I've been in a lot of ports around the world. I've worked in many ports throughout my 35 year career. I've never worked in a port that exported cattle. These are uh, pregnant dairy cattle that uh, get exported to various uh, countries around the world. I usually tell folks that you know, be more than welcome you know, to give you a tour of that cattle boat. It's, it's pretty neat to see for the first time, but I'm warning you now, that'll be the last time you ever wear that pair of shoes. <laughs> they will be unsavable. <laughs> uh, we handle uh, 
through one of our partners you know, uh, at the Port of Wilmington. We handled military vehicles uh, uh, about six weeks ago. A lot of them came in by train. We unloaded the train and then loaded them on to the, uh, the ship. Uh, grains, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm uh, getting some advice from you. That, 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 that's why, I can't, that's the, as uh, Carla has an and I have Catherine to tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Grains. We handle uh, all types of grains. Uh, the last uh, vessel we had in with was 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 doing uh, was doing uh, corn being imported, believe it or not. Salt. So uh, some of y'all know me. Uh, I came to Delaware by way of Florida. I was running our, our other U.S. port in Port Canaveral, Florida. So um, I'm a warm weather guy. And uh, when I was here five years ago, it snowed like crazy. I'm like, what the heck am I doing? Yeah, right? <laughs> well, I left back to Florida, and the customer, the, the import salt customers used to call me up and say, when are you coming back? It hasn't snowed since you left. <laughs> so I came back in August. Sure enough, in December, January, February, March, it snowed like crazy. So uh, I took the hit for the port, and now we, we are, our salt uh, imports have increased so far this year. Plywood. This is a, a brand new uh, uh, import for the Port of Wilmington. First time ever. We started last uh, September. This particular plywood is coming in from uh, Chile. Uh, lumber started a couple years ago. Brand new to the port. Uh, we increased uh, starting in January. We increased from one sailing a month to two sailings a month, primarily from uh, Germany. Turkish juice, a brand new import. Historically, the port has done very well in Brazilian and Argentine juice, uh, but this year we've done Turkish juice as well as Chinese juice new, new to the port. Something that has not happened yet, but uh, we're working on it, is um, shredded tires for export to Turkey to be used as fuel for cement plants over there. So obviously, all countries have an issue with tires, right? I mean, it's, it's just it's just one of those things with, when the tires are wear out, what do you do with them? Well, they don't want them thrown in the landfill. Well, they are now using it for fuel. Uh, so we're right now accumulating about 20 metric, 20,000 metric tons of used tires to be exported to Turkey, and hopefully that will pick up in uh, July. We talked about the grapes earlier, not only Chilean grapes, but uh, uh, Peruvian. Uh, and other uh, other uh, types of produce and fruits. So as I mentioned earlier, we do uh, containers primarily with Dole Chiquita, uh, uh, break bulk. We do uh, export of Petco. There's a, a refinery in Delaware City down south of here that uh, Petco is a byproduct of that uh, process. So we export that out. We do, uh, as I mentioned, import salts. We do um, super sacks of various type of dry chemicals. Uh, liquid bulk, uh, we have a vessel that comes in from Brazil roughly once a month that brings in a literally a boatload of uh, juice. It's, it's a, a bulk vessel that we hook up, pump up to it and they pump it out, uh, out of the vessel you know, into uh, landside storage tanks. And as I mentioned earlier, we do quite a bit of uh, finished vehicles, both uh, import and export. Uh, so that's the stevedoring piece, but uh, you know we also do quite a bit of terminal handling. We have uh, we, we entered into an agreement uh, uh, two years ago with a company called Fresh Pack. So a lot of the clementines coming from Morocco, a lot of the grapes coming from Chile, have to be repacked when they get here. Uh, many of them go to offsite warehouses for that repack. Well, we brought repack onto the port just to you know, reduce the expense of that inland transportation. If any of you are familiar with uh, trucking in the United States, it's not cheap. You know, so by bringing that, you know, by cutting that piece out, you know, it makes that, gets that product to market a little bit less expensive. We have uh, warehouses, I think it's gonna be on the slide here in a second, but we have a million square feet of warehouses uh, at the Port of Wilmington, roughly 850,000 square feet of, of refrigerated, including in that is Rapid Shield, where we have a section of the warehouse and we put it under a rapid cooler and it takes the temperature down roughly 30 degrees 
in a matter of minutes. Uh, we have a ripening facility on site for gold. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, fumigation, we have on-site uh, CBP, we have on-site USDA. Again, that takes cost out of the supply chain when you have those regulatory agencies, you know, you're right on site. 400 ships, uh, 6 million tons a year. Uh, we've already talked about all the different you know, types of uh, your products we handle, but uh, this year we will probably surpass uh, the 400 ships. So when golf teamers started looking at, at Wilmington, the state of Delaware had run the port for quite a few years, but it was in need of some tender loving care. Uh, and essentially the state of Delaware, they had the resources, but the resources were going to be the taxpayer of the state of Delaware. So that's when they looked at you know, going out with a, a bid process to have a private operator come in and, and, uh, and take over the facility. It was roughly 100 folks that showed interest in, in running the port, and then it was narrowed down, narrowed down, and then uh, they had a pretty stiff competition in the last three, so we were you know, honored you know, you to, you know, to win uh, that final process, in which we received a 50-year concession from the state of Delaware, which were about three and a half years in, so we got 46 and a half years uh, to move all your cargo. So you, 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 Please uh, start sooner than later, because I'm not sure I've got another 46 and a half years left. <laughs> uh, one of the projects uh, that we took over when we first started was, again, as I mentioned earlier, the port's 99 years old, and there was a couple berths that needed uh, refurbishment. And uh, when we were refurbing the berths, when they were pulling out the pilings, they were the original pilings from 1923 that were just now being replaced. So you know, they, uh, those pilings, you know, Certainly, we got their useful life you know, out of. But those two birth uh, refurbishments uh, cost us right about $6 million. And then we uh, started undertaking a yard densification project where, under the old uh, facility, Gull and Chiquita had their own private yards. And everything was container on chassis, which meant it was, everything was spread out you know, uh, you know, on the land. Uh, so we needed to increase the capacity of the Port of Wilmington, so we needed to go up, we needed to stack. So we invested about $38 million in a yard densification project that we're now able to stack those refrigerated uh, containers. We brought in uh, five brand new electric RTGs to replace diesel operated uh, new reach stackers and essentially double the capacity of the facility from 300,000 TEUs up to 600,000 TEUs. I'll just hold on for a second because I think I need to, in my blabbering, I think I've covered a lot of this <laughs> new information. So here's some uh, other investment. You know, I mentioned the five you know, RTGs uh, three reach stackers, 35 what we call bomb carts. They're essentially uh, chassis that you just drop the container you know, right on you know, from the crane. Uh, it's not as inexpensive as a chassis, but it's usually it's just used for you know, terminal work. Uh, 34 yard tractors, four forklifts, uh, 30 additional all electric uh, forklifts, one mobile harbor crane, and these three revolver spreaders uh, are right now being tested where right now, a lot of the dry bulk cargo that we handle is picked up by a clamshell, picked up, and then kind of just dropped onto the dock or by the export is picked up and then dropped. So some of the cargos are messy, so we're testing these revolver spreaders to where essentially it looks like a container that's hooked up to a spreader. You put the, the dry bulk in there, it goes out over the hold of the ship, and then turns and drops the cargo in. So you're not dropping dry bulk all the way over to the ship. So it just, uh, it's just more um, economical as well as our environmentally uh, friendly. So in our concession, we got the existing port of Wilmington is roughly 308 acres. And as you saw, we, we carry a lot of you know, diverse commodities. In that 50-year concession, we also got access to 112 acres of what the state calls Edgemore. It's an old DuPont titanium dioxide plant. 
it's a, it's a brownfield where we, it's, it's very contaminated site. So putting a new marine terminal is probably the best uh, fit for you know, you know, that particular land because every all the bad stuff that's underneath the soil is going to get capped by lots and lots of sand and then aggregate and then uh, half fall on top of that. Uh, we hope to, this says 2023, but we have our fingers crossed that uh, if we get a, uh, our two lapse permits by this August, we should be able to break ground on that facility sometime. Sorry. My family would like to lose me. <laughs> By the way, my wife loves this direct deposit. I'm in Delaware, she's in Florida, she loves this direct deposit. <laughs> but in, uh, we, we hope to uh, break ground uh, by, the, by the fall of this year. And you know, this is a brand new state-of-the-art marine terminal uh, with capacity of 1.2 million TEUs. Uh, we plan it'll be primarily built as a as a uh, container terminal. Uh, it'll have two berths, uh, a total of 2,600 feet uh, to handle super potent Panamax cranes, uh, up to 14,000 TEUs. So uh, the largest vessel we get at the port of Wilmington right now is roughly in the uh, 2,600 TEUs. So this is uh, quite a bit. The uh, U.S. government, along with the uh, states of Delaware, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, uh, just deepened the entire river from the mouth all the way up to Philadelphia of 45 feet of water. We will be dredging to the tune of about $38 million uh, from the main channel to our docks to have 45 feet of water in order to handle those vessels. Uh, the cranes that you see, there'll be six super post Panamax uh, cranes. I'm not touching anything. <laughs> Evil on. Um, but these will be you know, the most modern container cranes they have out there with, with, with double pick capabilities where you're actually lifting two 40 foot containers at once and bringing over. So your, your productivity doesn't quite double, but essentially it gets you headed in, in that direction. So we're obviously excited about, uh, about that project. We hope to have Phase one, which is roughly half the terminal, the entire key, three cranes, half the terminal, uh, open first quarter of 2025. Hmm. And I think that's it for the uh, for the, for the board. Thank you.